Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to make a super simple portable Raspberry Pi retro gaming machine. Now we're going to be utilizing a 3.5 inch IPS display. These are available on Amazon for about $30 and it's one of my favorite screens. I know it's a lot smaller than the five inch version I did a while ago, but it looks great. It's IPS, it'll do 60 FPS. This method is very easy. My six year old daughter could even build one of these. It requires no soldering at all. I will be doing another video in about two days that does require soldering, but it'll make the unit a little thinner. Here's a quick look at that version. Like I mentioned, it runs on one 18650 cell. It's a 2500 milliamp hour battery, and it does last for about three hours on one cell. And if you have extras, you can just swap it out, shut it down, replace the battery. I just wanted to get this first method out of the way for the people that aren't so tech savvy. Anybody can put one of these together. So the first thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a Raspberry Pi. You can use a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. I opted to use the Raspberry Pi 3 because it has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in. Now, this screen comes with this back plate. It also comes with a front bezel and all the hardware needed. I already have RetroPie flash to the SD card. If you need to know how to do that, I've made several videos. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, you may need to modify the config.txt. This screen does work out of the box, but there is a black border around it. In order to get rid of that, I have left a Dropbox text file down below. It has everything you need to remove that black border. Now I can deal with it, but I know a lot of people wanna use the full amount of screen they have. It's only a 3.5 inch screen, so the more we can get is better. I've already mounted my Pi 3 to the plate that comes with the screen itself. The screen also comes with a front bezel. Now all the hardware is included with this, I just have it put together here. I didn't put the screen on the Pi yet, I wanted to show you how to do that. It does come with some extra nuts and bolts to mount everything together. The screen itself does support 60 FPS because we're running through HDMI. The full resolution of the screen is 320 by 480 It does seem a little low, but we're running retro games on here and it looks great. It's also IPS, which is a big plus. It just plugs into the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins, and then you'll connect it with this HDMI U adapter. This is also a touchscreen, but there's no touchscreen functionality within RetroPie, so you'll have to run Raspbian or something like that and install some drivers. I hate small screens with touchscreens on my Raspberry Pi, so I'm not even worried about it. Over here, we have a power button and some extra buttons to control the menu. There's also a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and you can control the volume from these buttons here which is a big plus because there's no speaker built in, we will have to use headphones. I haven't found anything small enough to add to this that doesn't add much bolt for an external speaker, so headphones are gonna have to work for now. I don't think it's that big of a deal, and if you guys have any suggestions for something small, let me know in the comments below. Next up, you're gonna need something to power this unit. I'm gonna be using the Pocket Juice 4000 milliamp hour battery here. They are available on Amazon, you can get them in black. You can charge them directly from the wall or the micro USB. We also have a power button and an extra USB 2.0 power out. One of the reasons I chose this battery pack is because it has its own built-in micro USB charging cable. This is what we're gonna be using to power this whole unit. Now these are $12 on Amazon right now. You can get them in black, blue, and pink. I actually got this from Walmart a long time ago. They were on sale, so I picked up a few of them. They only had pink in stock. And finally, you're gonna need some type of controller to hold this whole unit. Now, I recommend the GameSir G3S. It does come with the phone holder and a USB dongle. So it's very easy to set this up. You don't have to deal with Bluetooth or anything like that. You're just gonna plug it into one of the free ports on the Pi, power it up, and configure the controller. Now, these run anywhere from $25 to $30, depending on the day. They're available on Amazon. You can also go with an extender controller like this. I did a video a long time ago on how to make a five inch portable Raspberry Pi. I use this controller, it's an iPega Spider. It'll also work in this situation, but it is Bluetooth. So that's one more thing to worry about setting up. If you're interested in building a five inch model, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So I won't be using either of these controllers in this tutorial, but I do recommend the GameSir G3S for you. I'm going to be using an 8-Bitto FC30 Pro or an SF30 Pro along with their phone clip. You can also use an older 8-Bitto controller with their extender, which is the same thing. It's just a phone clip. It goes right on top of the controller and you can mount everything in. This is a Bluetooth option, so you do have to set Bluetooth up. I'm going to put this together real quick and just show you how it looks with the phone clip on it. 
it's a bit more expensive also. These are $50, plus you have to buy the phone clip for, I think, about eight. There are several options out there. You can even use a PS3 controller with a phone clip, but the G3S is probably going to be the least expensive if you don't have anything else to work with. You'll also need a screwdriver, something to cut some double-sided sticky tape with, and some double-sided sticky tape. You can get this anywhere. Now the intro to this video actually took a lot longer than building the unit itself. You can build this in about five minutes. It's that easy. As long as you have RetroPie set up on an SD card, you're gonna mount the base plate to the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm gonna put a few screws in it to save some time. We're gonna throw the screen on top of the Pi. It's just gonna plug right into the GPIO pins. Make sure they line up, make sure the HDMI lines up, then we're gonna plug in our HDMI adapter. And we're almost done here. All we need to do is put the bezel on top. And like I mentioned, if you wanna take up all the screen, instead of having a black border, you will have to add the line of text that I have in the description to the config.txt inside a RetroPie. Right on the SD card, you can do it from Windows. I'm just gonna screw the bezel on real quick. I'm just going to put two screws in it. I do recommend putting all the screws in it. I'm doing this to save time. And there we have it. We have the screen mounted to the Raspberry Pi. We have the bezel and the back plate on. Now it's time to add the battery pack. So you're going to press this once to turn it on. We got four LEDs here. I believe when it's turned on, if you press it twice, it goes off or you hold the button. One of those options there will turn it off while your Pi is running. I'm going to plug in the included micro USB cable here that's on the battery pack to the screen itself. The screen will supply power to the Pi also. And now I just want to line it up. I'm going to use some double-sided sticky tape to attach it to the back panel. Just cut a little piece off here. Make sure it's lined up pretty well. And we're just going to make sure we can get it on here pretty center. Now, one of the cool things about this battery pack and this case itself is that your four LEDs for the power indicator will still be visible through this little slot where the micro SD card goes. I'm just gonna make sure it's kind of lined up. Might take you a little time to get it right, but it should work just fine. Now, if we take a look, we'll still have access to our LEDs so we can see our power indicator. Press the button one time and your Raspberry Pi should boot up. HDMI detected, RetroPie is now loading. You can also put this inside of the crease a little bit so it's not sticking up so far. We still have access to our micro SD card and the menu buttons on the screen. So you're pretty much done here. You could actually just use this as a battery powered Raspberry Pi connected to your television. Just plug it in through HDMI, pull this out, and you can start playing your favorite retro games. But we wanted to make a portable here so I'm gonna grab my controller. I'll just test fit it in this game, sir. It's gonna connect right to the battery pack. The game, sir, does have these little adjusters here so we can tighten it up. You now have a fully functional battery powered Raspberry Pi running Retro Pi. Now this is one of the easiest ways I've ever found to make one with no soldering at all. You could also use the spider. Fits right in here perfectly. But I wanted to use this 8 bit controller, so that's what I'm going to be using. I already have Bluetooth set up here. I'm just going to turn it on. We'll get a blinking light. Should vibrate once, and I'll be connected. Let me zoom in a little bit, and I'll show you some gameplay here. All right, so if you were using the GameSir, you just plug in your little USB dongle. It'll automatically detect the GameSir. You'll have to set the controller up. Like I mentioned, this is Bluetooth, and I've already set this up. We'll go into Neo Geo, and I'll test out Blazing Star. So I know this isn't for everybody. If you're a more advanced user, you're not going to want to strap this to the back. But if you've never made a project like this, it does feel really good when you have it finished and you're playing it on the couch. My next video will involve using 18650 batteries instead of the battery pack on the back. It does make it less bulky and less heavy, but you do suffer from less battery time. This 4,000 milliamp hour power juice battery pack will last six to eight hours, depending on what you're running. I haven't tested the runtime on this power juice battery pack, but I did test it on my 18650, which is only 2,500 milliamp hours. It lasted for three hours and 43 minutes before it completely cut off. 
So my guesstimation on the 4,000 milliamp hour battery is six to eight hours. It really depends on what kind of games you're running at the time. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. This is a cool little weekend project. Now, it's not for everybody. Like I mentioned, I will be showing you how to use one of these pocket juice batteries, but we're going to have to cut it open, take the cells out, solder some stuff. It is a bit more involved, but I will have that video up in a couple days. After it's all said and done, it looks a little something like this, but it does significantly decrease the thickness of the whole unit. If you guys are interested in building something like this, I will leave links to Amazon in the description for everything I used in this video. I'm also gonna leave a Dropbox text file down below you can download. It's just a few lines of text you will have to add to the config.txt inside a RetroPie on the SD card. It will allow you to take advantage of the full 3.5 inch screen when you're in emulation station. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, Hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.